Welcome to our tutorial about the helical curve tool. Let's begin with a rectangle on Sketch 1. Right click, done. Now let's dimension it. We'll make the longer dimension 8 inches. OK. And the shorter dimension 2 inches. OK. Let's exit the sketch. Finish sketch. Now let's create a 3D sketch. Include geometry. Let's get this line and this line. Let's activate the helical curve tool now. The helical curve dialog window opens. A helical curve is similar to the coil tool that we introduced earlier. Let's stick to the shape tab for now. We're going to select the midpoint of this line and this midpoint and this point at the left bottom corner of the rectangle. Here's my helical curve preview. It's got a 2 inch diameter, 1 inch pitch, and 8 revolutions. There's no taper, as you can see. If I want to change the number of revolutions, let's say I want one revolution with a pitch value of 8. Let's check this out. Here's our preview. Let's switch it back now. Another helical curve type option is revolution and height. Now the pitch area is grayed out, but we're able to change the height as well as the number of revolutions. Let's check out the pitch and height type. Now the number of revolutions is grayed out. The last option under type is spiral. With the spiral type of helical curve, we're able to define pitch and revolutions. OK, back to pitch and revolution type. Let's take a look at the next tab, the helix ends. We've got two options for the start, natural and flat. Let's take a right view. This is going to let us better see the difference between these two options, natural and flat. Let's select flat. As you see, the flat angle is 90 degrees, and the transitional angle is also 90 degrees. Let's check out the natural start. Symmetric view. And click OK. Now let's create a sweep using this helix. We'll finish the sketch. Activate a 2D sketch on the XZ plane. Let's take a face view. Project geometry. Let's select this point here and take a top view. Now let's create a rectangle somewhere here. Now activate the line tool. Oops, right click, done. Let's delete that. OK, line tool again. From bottom left to top right corner, right click, done. Let's use a coincident constraint between the midpoint of this line and the center point of the circle. Right click, done. Now let's select our new line and convert it to construction geometry, and we're ready to finish the sketch. Take an isometric view and activate the sweep tool. First, let's choose the profile to sweep. Now the path, our helix. And here comes our preview. Let's click OK. Now let's right click on Sketch 1 and hide it. Visibility. I'd like to create another sweep on top of this face. Let's activate a 3D sketch. Include geometry. Let's select this edge. Exit the sketch. Now let's insert a work plane. We'll select this point and this curve. Let's place the 2D sketch on this plane. Project geometry. This point. Activate the circle tool and let's create a circle down here. Now we'll apply some dimensions. We'll make it 5 eighths of an inch, 0.625, OK. And finish the sketch. 
we're ready to create our next sweep, let's output as surfaces for the path. We're going to use this curve. Here we have a preview. Let's click OK. I want to zoom out a little bit now. The surface that we just created intersects with this face at a constant distance of 5 eighths of an inch from this edge here. That's going to be our new path. Now let's create a 3D sketch. We'll use the intersection curve tool. Let's select the first surface and this face and click OK. Let's right click on sweep one and hide it. And let's hide work plane one as well. Now let's exit this sketch and create another work plane. We'll select this point and this curve. Let's create our 2D sketch on the new plane. Project geometry. Let's zoom in a bit so I can get my point. Let's select this point here. And let's create a profile. Activate the line tool. Let's close the profile. Something like this. Right click. Done. Finish the sketch. And let's take an isometric view. Now let's activate the sweep tool again. The profile, it's already pre selected. Type. First, let's try the path type. And let's select this curve. Here's our preview. Let's click OK. Let's change sweep 2's color. Right click on it, properties. Let's have a look at it in blue. OK. And let me zoom out a little bit so we can have a better look. OK, we've obviously got a problem. Let's double click on Sweep 2. Under Type, instead of Path, let's try Path and Guide Surface. Now let's select the Guide Surface. It'll be this face. And here's our preview. Let's click OK. And the results do look much better. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yes. Let's take an isometric view. OK. Let's shift select these new features and delete them. Do we want to delete the consumed sketches and features also? Yes, we do. OK. Let's control select and delete the 3D sketches 2 and 3. Right click, delete. And let's make sketch 1 visible. Right click, visibility. I'd like to edit this sketch. Let's double click on it. Take a front view. Now activate the spline tool. I'll use it to create a freeform spline. Something like this. Right click create. Right click done. And let's add horizontal constraints. Between this point and the midpoint and this point and the midpoint. Right click, done. Let's finish the sketch. Now let's activate a 3D sketch. Once again, include geometry. Let's take this line and this line. And let's activate the helical curve tool. We'll select this point this point down below, and the bottom left corner. Let's leave the default values in place here. Include geometry, we'll select our spline. Now let's connect the helical curve and the spline. We'll use the spline tool. Select this point, and this point. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's select this plane as well. 
and place a point about right here. To deselect the plane, click the center of the triad. Let's click on this point, right click and create. Now let's create a second spline. This point, this point, and this plane. And let's place our point right about here. Deselect the triad, and this point. Right click, create. And again, right click and done. Now let's apply a tangent constraint. We'll select the spline and the curve. And then the spline and the helix. Same thing on the top. The spline and the curve. And then the spline and the helix. Let's exit the sketch. And let's create a work plane. Select this point. Let's select this point and this curve. Let's create a 2D sketch now on this work plane. Project Geometry will choose this point. Activate the Circle tool. Let's snap a center to this point. And let's apply dimensions to our new circle. Diameter, half an inch. Half an inch and click OK. Now exit the sketch and take an isometric view. We're ready to activate the Sweep tool again. Let's select this profile. And this curve. But we don't have a preview. That's usually a problem. It could be that the radius of the profile is too big. Let's click OK. Yes, error message, self-intersecting surface. OK, let's see how we can fix this. Let's change the diameter of our circle to a quarter of an inch. OK. Back to the Sweep tool. Choose the profile and the path. And now we've got a preview. Let's click OK. Take an isometric view. Looks pretty good. This concludes our tutorial about the helical curve.